Hello and good afternoon from the homestead. Hi guys. Well, we thought we would take a little time today, take a walk around the homestead, and talk about what we hope to accomplish here. And there's no better place to start than right over here at the biggest project that we have. That is our house foundation. So, yeah, boy. I can't wait till we start building our house. Yeah, yeah, I am. I am ready to start doing that. But the foundation was a big deal, and building that house is a big deal. So it what is. we're going to do is, is um, it's a 24 by 36 house. It'll be stick frame built from all of the uh, lumber that I'm going to show you that we're going to mill on our sawmill. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to come around over here on this side. And you can see... We have our mobile chick area, or our mobile chick coop, and they're in their chick area. Yeah, this is our laying hens. That's right. And this is a 164 foot uh, electrified fence. So it's probably, I don't know, 35, 40 feet across by 20, 20 so feet. Yeah. Um, it's a pretty big area. It is a pretty big bay area, but behind that is where our pasture area is going to be. And we'll take a walk over there right now. It's getting a little bit overgrown back there, but uh, we'll get to mowing it pretty quick here. So, back here on the back side of the chick area, you can see over there. Rocco's on his way out to check it out right now make sure it's safe. So right behind me over here is our pasture area. Goes from about over there all the way to this log pile. And we can fit four of these chicken areas in there no problem. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to rotate those laying birds through there. And they should have plenty of, of grass in there and they should be able to stay out of their own their own stuff. Yeah, even where they are now, we move their coop every day, so around the fence area. That's right. And so if and they're if, not in the same spot. No, and and the laying birds, uh, if you give them a big enough area, they don't make as big of a mess as oh my god, the dinosaurs over there. They are just Yeah. They're messy birds. They're messy birds. So let's go over here and take a walk down towards the front. Over here on the other side of Missy, you can see one of our log piles. Oh, and the dogs make a mess out here too sometimes. This is one of our log piles. So when we had the land cleared in 2021, 2021, we had them stack up all of our timbers. This is loblolly pine. Uh, it's perfect for for uh, construction. And uh, I bought a sawmill, and we we're going to mill that all up to build our house. And actually, these structures here and the mobile coop and everything around up there... I used wood off of the mill, so... Yeah, everything that you've built so far has come off the th mill. That's right, it has. Over here, you can see our debris pile. So that's the tops, the stumps, all that stuff. And what we did was there's a little ravine there, small one. And in heavy rain, some water flows through there. 
So it's unusable to us as the farm. So we had them dump all that in there. Now it's not blocking the water from going through. It still spills. Yeah, it does. It still spills out the back of our property. But over time, that will break down. And yeah, even, little by little, we've been working it so that we can get further and further back. in. Yeah. Yeah. So eventually, that will be nice, rich, usable land. I don't know if it'll happen in our lifetime, but we're trying to be good stewards of our property and reclaiming that little area is a good idea for us. So here's another one of our log piles. And then behind that is an even another one of our log piles. So I think we're going to be in really good shape when it yeah. comes to um, having enough timber for the house. So over here, mm -hmm. you can see we have Missy's greenhouses. So these were one of the first things we put up when we got here because we really needed yeah. to get a jump on the growing season. Mm -hmm. uh, even February 26th when we moved here, it was only what, a couple weeks after, yeah. Um, we put these up, and they should have been up mid-February, not mid-March. So. No, we're a little behind, but not by much. Not by much. So, Missy, why don't you take them inside and show them what you got going on in there? All right. So here I have some lettuce that is getting a little bit long so it's going to go into the garden and I'm going to be able to harvest that soon. This greenhouse is actually stuff that I'm hardening off right now. So I have some spinach, some eggplant over here, three different kinds. And I have some bok choy, some Swiss chard. And I had have a friend, Denise from SL Grady, who gave me some sweet potatoes. And I've been growing sweet potato slips off of those sweet potatoes. And I've put some into grow bags for ourselves. And then I figured because I have so many, I was going to sell them at the farmer's market. But um, thank you, Denise, because it's working out really well. We can't wait for sweet potatoes. And then I have some marigolds over here, some more dill out here, basil, parsley, and some tomatoes. These are actually called top hat tomatoes. And what is this right here? And this flower is zinnia. So these are my zinnia plants. And some of these have little tomatoes on them already. These turn out to be orange like cherry tomatoes and then this is a patio tomato um, cucumber so these can be grown in pots and then these are a bunch of different kinds of tomatoes that I have that I've hardened off so when I sell the ones from the farmers market or they get too big and come back we'll put those in the garden and then go from there and I'll have extra plants and out here she's got plants that are getting ready for the market garden mm -hmm. for sale and for the farmers market and this is just a little bit more of the same yeah. stuff with this is actually bigger plants of dill which if they don't sell then I'm going to put into more bags so that I can start herbs for myself but um my plan is to actually dry some of the herbs too so I could potentially sell those. So those are some future plans. But I have some more bok choy, some zucchini, cucumber, some leeks, more basil, parsley, some peppermint, spearmint, some eggplant. I have a little variety of everything right now. Oh, it looks like the wind blew these over. Alright, so these are zucchini and summer squash. And these guys keep blowing over because 
They're ginormous. They're getting too big. They're actually already flowering. And if they don't sell, then we will be putting these into the ground. Awesome. And what do you got going on over in this greenhouse over here? Alright, so... Over in this greenhouse, it's kind of like my working greenhouse. This is where I plant seeds, where I up pot, and get everything going to get ready to get hardened off. So here I have more mint, my sweet potato experiment. Again, thank you, Denise, because this works out awesome. I've been able to cut so many slips off. I have cilantro that's going to be getting ready. It's not quite there yet. Some more mustard green marigolds. I started some geraniums. So those are coming up really well. Alright, so this is the up potted side. So now I have my mint up potted. And this is going to be going out to get hardened off and ready for sale. Um, more tomatoes that need to get hardened off, spinach, Swiss chard, um, eggplant. So I'm really trying to get in this process of seeding and getting my seedlings up potted and then hardened off. So here's some stuff that is getting hardened off now. I have some lettuces some mustard greens, some more zinnia plants, a sunflower, and these are seeds that I just started. So nothing's happening in here yet, but that's what we have. And here we come up the back side and let's take a look over here. So what we got over here is our market garden. Okay guys, so in here we have some uh, Swiss chard and we have some kale and as we go down we have bok choy, radish, beets. Coming up the other way we have beans and peas and then we have some lettuce. In the third row, Missy, you just put in radish. I put in radishes. Um, it, only in like a third or a fourth of the area because the other third we're trying to do succession, succession planting so i wanted to leave a spot open for when those radishes are just about ready i can plant new radishes so that we'd have a constant supply um, then over here we have two rows of okra two rows of kale all different varieties two rows of different varieties of tomatoes and then there's going to be squash and zucchini squash zucchini and cucumber going in the next two rows yep. and that's half of this garden this yeah. garden is 120 feet by 80 feet with 70 foot rows approximately mm -hmm. but that's the market garden and that's the garden for ourselves yeah so if you guys come up this way, hold on. We'll go past the greenhouses up to the top of our property. Because this is the next big project that we have coming up. And it's a big project. So right here behind us, mm -hmm. you can see the entrance in from our road and this section right here up to our vehicles we're going to rock that in and make a little parking area and then over here on the other side of my vehicle it goes around and down by the garden and all the way down to our house that is going to be our driveway mm -hmm. So luckily for us, we'll take a walk over here, guys. Luckily for us, we have good friends in Marcel and Denise. Yes. And they were very, very kind. And they let me use their dump trailer. 
my thought was I would get a dump truck to come and he would tailgate dump that load out and I would hand shovel and rake mm -hmm. probably about 10 tons of rock in this area and uh, that much dump truck loads would have come at a very substantial cost well Marcel let me borrow his trailer the quarry's only seven ten miles down the road yeah so this one load of rock that I got this is two inch clean I got three and a half tons of that it cost me thirty three dollars yeah not bad not bad at all so ten more tons of that were well under the five six hundred dollar price range that would it had mm -hmm. to bring in um, dump truck loads of it and we have another big surprise I can't really spill the beans on it yet because I I'm not sure if it's gonna happen but there's a pretty good possibility we're gonna have a tractor here next week for this project so there shall be this much shoveling. Yeah, it should I'll be, be a lot easier to get things done. Yeah, I mean, I can whack this job out in a day of hauling rocks and a day yeah. of moving it around with the with the with the tractor. So keep keep in mind that's coming up. That'll be on the next video. We'll be filming this project, and if you see a, a tractor from a certain somebody, somebody, you know who you are out there. So that's where we're at with that. You're, mm -hmm. We're gonna have to keep that another a little secret until I'm for sure everything's yeah. in place that we can make that happen. But over here, over my shoulder here, is my sawmill. So that is where all the lumber is gonna come from, and that is how we are going to build our mm -hmm. homestead. And you can see, guys. Whoop! I'm spinning you around real fast. I've got a pile of lumber right next to the sawmill already, so that's not bad. I just back my truck in there and, and pull them out, and then I roll them over onto the mill, and, and I make boards. And you can see I've got some leftover boards from some other projects, so we're getting it done. Yeah, little by little. Little by it's little. Happening. But that's the kind of the goals we have here for mm -hmm. our homestead um, for this year. Yeah never know what's going to happen from year to year but we would like to see all those things happen this year and get this rock project done next week so that's where we're going to leave it for now guys i hope you enjoyed a little tour of our homestead and the vision of where we hope it's going to go till the next one hit that subscribe hit that like and hit that bell it'll let you know every time we got a video coming out all right guys have a good one bye bye